Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Counselor Advocacy for the Jewish University Experience Virtual College Fair. Thank you for joining us. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. This is just one of many different sessions that's happening, and all of them are being recorded and will be available within about a week's time at strivescan.com backslash Jewish Student Fair. I'd now like to turn it over to our presenters, and we'll get started this afternoon with Princeton University. Great, thank you so much. Uh, my name is Patrick Gladstone. I'm Associate Dean of Admission at Princeton, and I'm joined by my colleague, Marnie. Hi, I'm Marnie, Marnie Blitz. I'm the Associate Director at the Center for Jewish Life, which is the Princeton Hillel. Great, so I'll take us through our slides and they'll both pop on uh, for Q&A at, at the end. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen here. All right, uh, so you should see a beautiful picture of, of Princeton uh, during the, the spring slash, slash summer here. Uh, so to kick us off, we'll give you a, a quick sense of uh, where we are geographically. Um, so we're located in uh, central New Jersey in a residential campus community that has a really vibrant uh, downtown. Um, the town of Princeton has about 30,000 residents uh, and the university and the, the Princeton community are, are closely tied. Uh, while we're in a suburban setting, we're never far from the amenities afforded uh, by our neighboring cities. You can see um, on the, the little map here, we're right between uh, New York and Philadelphia. Now, there's a train station that's actually right on campus and we are a 90 minute train ride from both New York City and from Philadelphia. Um, and we are a shorter train ride away from Newark Airport, airport, making it uh, very easy for students to, to travel home uh, during breaks throughout the year. Uh, we're the fourth oldest college in the United States. Our campus features just about 200 buildings on close to 600 acres of land. And it's very pedestrian friendly. You can walk across campus in about 20 minutes, um, given where you're at. Next up here, the undergraduate focus. So Princeton's focused on undergraduate study. We have about 5,300 undergrads and just about 2,900 grad students. This ratio is unique when compared with a lot of our peer institutions and it supports the liberal arts mission of the university. Um, our faculty boasts 10 Nobel Prize winners in addition to Fields Medalists, MacArthur Fellows, Blitz Prize winners, and even a former uh, US Poet, uh, poet Laureate. Um, these prize winning professors, I think it's important to, to point out, don't just do research or sit in ivory towers, but they teach undergraduates. That's a big part of the experience at Princeton. So they all come in knowing they're going to teach. That's their first responsibility. Um, with 75% of our classes having fewer than 20 students, um, our undergraduates receive a lot of individual attention from faculty. And like I said, all faculty members come to Princeton to teach. Uh, at Princeton, every student is required to complete a senior thesis, a culminating project before they graduate in a field of their choosing. So this is a large scale uh, work of original research that really marks your transition from a consumer of knowledge uh, to a contributor of that knowledge in any given field. Uh, this can take a lot of different shapes and forms um, throughout your time at Princeton. Uh, the picture here shows uh, esteemed Professor Eddie Glau Jr. Some of you have, may have seen him on MSNBC or CNN uh, from time to time. Uh, next up, service and civic engagement is really central to the experience. Uh, at, at Princeton. 60% um, of students will have engaged in a volunteer activity by the time that they graduate. A lot of this centers around uh, the, the Pace Center for Civic Engagement or one of the many uh, student groups or organizations. Now, one of the hallmarks of the Princeton experience is living on campus in one of our six residential colleges with a couple more coming online shortly. Uh, these are a collection of dorms, dining halls, and advising offices that each serve about 200 first year students. Um, housing at Princeton is guaranteed for all four years. Um, your residential college is really the first community you're going to be a part of upon enrolling. Um, it's one that you're going to stay connected to throughout your four years and, and beyond. 96% uh, of our students, and this is telling, 96% of our students uh, do live on campus. I think it's largely because of the community that exists on campus. There's over 300 student organizations and clubs uh, ranging from performing arts to debate and community service, 37 Division I varsity sports teams, in addition to club and intramural sports, 17 religious chaplaincies, and tons of ways to get involved on campus. Uh, the Center for Jewish Life on, on campus embraces all Jewish students, amplifying um, connections uh, to Jewish meaning, experience, and community. Um, and there's a lot happening at the, the CJL on campus. Um, a lot of it centers around the, the many student groups as a part of this organization. 
so Jewish students arrive on Princeton's campus with uh, many different backgrounds, interests, and, and voices that they bring. Um, and our collection of student groups, they reflect on this. Uh, there are over 17 groups um, that grows, tend to grow every year uh, with many student leaders in these different groups um, that, that meet to discuss a, a lot of different topics, social justice, the performing arts, dialogues and partnerships with other groups on campus, um, they discuss politics, advocacy, prayer. There's quite a bit happening on campus um, and it centers around the, the Center for Jewish Life for students that are choose to participate. Next up, um, I do think it's important to, to note uh, one big change this past year uh, for the first years of this past year, uh, we just established a culture and difference requirement in the general education system. Uh, this requirement embeds an appreciation for diverse perspectives within the curriculum, exposing students, no matter their concentration, to these important topics. So we're committed to creating a vibrant and diverse student community. And we define diversity in many ways. So when we, admissions offices, when we assemble a class, we're looking for diversity of thought, ethnic, cultural, and religious diversity. Um, we're looking for um, socioeconomic diversity, geographic diversity, and diversity of academic interests. And that list certainly is not exhaustive. Our student body consists of students from all 50 states, more than 100 countries. 46% uh, of our students identify as students of color, and just under 16% are the first in their families to attend college. Now, when you join the Princeton community, you are entering a lifelong relationship with this institution in the color orange, of course, as you can see in this picture. Uh, every year, more than 25,000 Princeton alumni uh, return for reunions. This year was, was virtual, last year had to be canceled, unfortunately. But moving forward, we're excited to, to bring alums back to campus. Um, it's definitely one of the most exciting and pride-filled weekends of the year for, for all of us who are part of the community. Um, you can see here Princeton alums participating in the P raid. Um, I think it's largely due to, to the fact that uh, within six months of, of graduating, 75% of our graduates are fully employed, 19% are in uh, attending graduate school. Um, about 75% of our uh, undergrads actually go on to earn a higher degree after they graduate at some point during their lives. Um, so that connection remains very strong and students are set up very well for the rest of their adult and professional lives. Now quickly, I wanna to touch on um, admissions and financial aid here. Um, I know we're running out of time, so I'll touch briefly on it. Tons more available on our website. Uh, we have a no loan financial aid policy. You are awarded grants in lieu of loans, which means you do not have to pay us back. We are committed to meeting 100% of demonstrated need based on a family's ability to pay. So you are never at a disadvantage in the process should you apply for or uh, qualify for financial aid. About 61% of our students are receiving financial aid. With that, here's some, some basic information uh, for you to, to get in touch with us. Um, if you have any other questions, uh, please feel free to visit our website and shoot us an email. With that, I will end my portion, pass it over to Franklin and Marshall. Thanks. Great, thank you so much. And our next presentation comes from Franklin and Marshall College. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Matt Arant. I'm one of the assistant directors of mission at Franklin and Marshall College in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Just give you a brief snapshot of where we are geographically. We're in Lancaster, it's about an hour and 15 hour and a half west of Philadelphia. So pretty much the Eastern uh, central part of uh, Pennsylvania. We do have an Amtrak station with, that's within walking distance of campus that can connect you to Philly, New York, uh, DC, Boston, all those major East Coast hubs. But Lancaster itself is really kind of a dynamic uh, downtown as well. And that's also within about a 10 to 15 minute walk from campus. It's, I kind of describe it as a, uh, a hipster enclave in the middle of Amish country. It's kind of a great way to describe Lancaster. A lot of great uh, dining options, local businesses, record stores, boutiques, art galleries. And the best thing about this is the proximity to campus. So our students are really able to engage with Lancaster, not only on a social level, but through a volunteerism uh, level as well. Boys and Girls Club is right downtown. There's several uh, nonprofits. So it's really a great way for students to not only take the benefits of Lancaster from like the cultural and social standpoint, but also really being that campus community member and really giving back in the civic uh, environment as well. About 2,400 students, uh, all undergraduate. So no graduate students are on campus. Students coming from about 48 states and 44 countries. So really uh, kind of diverse, both in terms of geographics Socioeconomic status, about 20% of our students are first gen, uh, students of color. Also about 20% are, are international students as well. So it's a really kind of cosmopolitan campus in terms of both geographics, but also uh, experiences too. Academically, uh, we have about over 60 majors to choose from. Our most popular ones typically are bio, business, psychology, uh, government, econ. Those are kind of the top four or five. But we have over 60 to choose from about a dozen languages. So students really can have a lot of autonomy in terms of that specific uh, academic program for, for themselves. We have what's called a special studies program where students can actually uh, create their own major 
uh, themselves. And kind of speaking through the Jewish student experience, we do, have a, we do have a Judaic studies minor with two tracks. One is Hebrew language and literature, then the other is Jewish uh, culture and history. And you can actually bump it up to a major as part of our special uh, studies uh, program. In terms of campus life, we are a division three uh, athletics, 27 sports, 25 D3. We do have D1 uh, wrestling and non-divisional squash. About 35% of our students are involved in athletics, a really popular choice there. For our uh, housing, we have a really unique system called College Houses. It's largely modeled after Oxford in England, but we use the Harry Potter analogy for kind of a pop culture uh, connection in which all students are placed in one of five college houses and they stay there uh, metaphorically for all four years. All the, all the students are able to uh, live on and off campus uh, after the first year. They're very much a part of that college house the entire uh, four year experience. So it's a really great way for students to really acclimate to college, both academically as well as uh, socially. Just because we have students coming from all over the country and all over the world, that first year of college can be tough. So really having that great uh, ecosystem really helps students not only be the best student they can, but also the best uh, campus community member as well. In terms of kind of the Jewish experience on campus, I am the uh, Hillel Jewish Life Liaison at FNM. We have uh, weekly Shabbat services. Our dining options is uh, Kivo. It's uh, kosher, international, vegan, organic. It's integrated uh, seamlessly with our main dining hall. It is a uh, Star K uh, certified. So it's, there's a great uh, kosher accommodations for all our students on campus. Additionally, do have uh, bi-weekly uh, bagel brunches, about 10 or 11 uh, student leaders. And that's a great way for students to really be involved on campus as soon as they get, as soon as they get to campus. They can be a freshman uh, committee chair. And it's really a great way for you to kind of build up that student engagement throughout your entire time as an undergraduate. In terms of kind of the application process, we're holistic review, which means within a variety of factors when determining an application's admissibility. Uh, test optional, we've been test optional for uh, several years now, not just a result of COVID-19. So if you feel like you want to submit those scores, you can, but if you don't want to, that's perfectly fine as well. We look at the transcript, rec letters, essay, kind of all the traditional uh, uh, components as well. We offer two major types of decisions, early decision and then regular decision. So we have uh, two rounds of ED and then uh, one round of RD. For more information on kind of the ED process, I encourage you to utilize the website or contact me personally because it's kind of a unique uh, admission decision uh, for that colleges offer other uh, students. I will drop my email in the chat box in just a few minutes, but I'm happy to be here uh, this afternoon or evening, depending on where you're, where you're calling from. And we hope to have a good dialogue through the rest of the, the session today. Thank you. Great, thank you so much, Matt. Our next presentation this afternoon comes to us from CUNY Queens College. Hi, everyone. Uh, sorry, let me just put up my... Um slide here. Right. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Brian. I'm an admissions counselor here at Queens College. So I'm just going to give a little bit of spiel um, on what we're like here. So uh, we were established in 1937 in Kew Garden Hills, Queens, New York. Um, because we've been around for a bit, we have over 150,000 alumni. Currently, we have about 20,000 uh, undergraduate and graduate students. We are a four-year college, part of the CUNY system, um, and we're top 1% of uh, colleges nationwide in helping students from lower-income families attain upward social and uh, economic mobility, meaning that, that many of our students, um, let's say, for example, if they start off in a um, our income family bracket, uh, a lot of our students have broken that glass ceiling and made it to, uh, you know, for example, upper middle class or uh, just using that as an example. But we are leaders in education. So Queens College has graduated more teachers, principals, and counselors for the city's public schools than any college in the New York metropolitan area. Uh, for accounting and business, we are uh, we do have the third largest number of accounting and business students in New York State. And we contribute to the local talent pool as a powerful economic uh, engine and leader in tech education. We are one of the most affordable colleges in the country. So over 90% of the students who, uh, who enter as freshmen and graduate within four years uh, earn uh, end up earn, um, earning the degrees without having to take federal student loans. We are also leaders in providing student support and have seen successful outcomes in that. Uh, an example of that would be our QCM4 program, which is um, there in place to help students graduate within four years. A little bit about our undergraduate programs. We have over 60 majors to choose from. So that includes art, uh, fine art, business administration, music, social sciences, and science. Our larger um, undergraduate majors would be psychology, accounting, economics, computer science, and education. So a little bit about our students. Um, 
uh, we're a very diverse campus, you know, Queens being a very diverse area in itself. Um, so our student body represents over 180 countries, 141 languages are spoken. Um, in regards to uh, a Jewish population, we have 1,000 Orthodox Jewish students, which is the second largest community in the country, 2,500 conservative, reform, reconstructionist, renewal, and post-denominational students, 1,000 Bukharian um, Jewish students, and 350 Persian Jewish students. So if you add it all together, it's about a quarter of um, our student population. A little bit of our student life student, uh, we do, um, there are student organized events. So sometimes they'll have popular music events, Friday, uh, Friday night Shabbat dinners, athletic events, club gatherings, um, tourist uh, study opportunities. The college itself also provides events. So we have things called like a welcome day, fall fest and midnight breakfast. You all know that midnight is spelled with a K. That is because our mascot is the night. A little bit about Jewish life on, at Queens College. Uh, we do have a newly renovated uh, lounge area in our Halal. We do also offer kosher options to eat uh, on campus, but also because we're in such a um, predominantly Jewish neighborhood, there's also many kosher options around if you don't want to you know, stick on staying on campus. We do have unique uh, Shabbat holiday and uh, experiences on campus. So that includes Hanukkah communal candle lighting, Purim celebrations, Megillah readings on campus, uh, Israel Independence Day Festival, uh, Shavuot all night learning services and other special programs. Uh, if you look at the top, um, the three people with the shirt that says Tismart, that is our Jewish acapella group, which, um, you know, I think acapella music is a pretty cool genre. But uh, we also have the OUJLIC, uh, which is a, a project of the Orthodox Union in partnership with our Halal. So they also offer weekly Torah learning, OUJLIC sponsored uh, Shabbat uh, experiences, uh, weekly free shurim and social events planned by the OUJLIC men's team, women's team and co-ed team. So if you want more information on that, um, they also have their own website. So qchalal.org, I can also put that in the chat. Um, living on campus, so we do have uh, summer apartments. Um, so it's live, uh, it would be on campus, you know, many colleges in New York, um, usually they're off campus, but for Queens College, it is centrally located. So the Summit Apartments is a beautiful and affordable apartment style residence located in the heart of campus. We do offer two and four bedroom options. Some of the amenities include fitness center, music practice rooms, free Wi-Fi and digital cable TV covered by bikes, um, zip car rentals and more. So um, over 60% of our students do receive financial assistance. Sometimes that comes in the form of grants, scholarships, work studies, or loans. Um, if you do end up having to pay out of pocket, we do have a CUNY payment plan. So um, you know, if paying $3,600 in one lump sum is a little bit encumbersome, um, that's fine. You can break it down to more manageable, manageable pieces. But 80% of our students do graduate debt free. So in regards to your applications, we do require transcripts, so we'll be looking at your GPA. We require letters of recommendation, personal statements, and for our music program, uh, they do require students to audition as well. So just some things that you want to keep in mind when you're submitting your application. All right, and that is my little summary of Queens College. Thank you for your time. Um, if you have any other questions, I'll also put this in the chat, but uh, you can email us at admissions at qc.cuny.edu. Thank you. Great, thank you so much, Brian. Our next presentation comes from James Madison University. Hello, friends. Uh, so my name is Joanna Caples. I am the admissions counselor at James Madison University that works with top of New Jersey, bottom of New York. Um, so I am probably the face that you will need to know and the contact person that you will need. Uh, JMU is a large state institution, public institution down in Harrisonburg, Virginia. So we are about 19,000 undergraduate students. That makes up 94% of our student population, which is kind of uncommon for a school that has over 20,000 total students. So we do have a graduate program, uh, but it is our, our, our university is highly, highly undergrad student. Um, we are the number two public school in the South, according to US News in 2020. 98% of our classes are taught by professors, which is rare for a school of this size. Again, um, because of the undergraduate population, there's not as many GAs as, as there would be at a larger institution with a larger graduate program. 80% um, of our graduates will have done research, practicum, internship, student teaching by the time that they graduate. Again, because there's so many more of them than our graduate students, so they get the opportunities just as much, if not more, than our graduate students would. Uh, we are coolly, uh, one of our cool stats, I guess, is we are actually number one in the country for students are more likely to recommend JMU as their school 
to other students than any other university, public university in the US, which is super cool. We're super, super proud of it. Um, part of that is because of that, you know, small uh, or the large undergraduate population, all of the opportunities that you get, you know, our average class is 25, our student professor ratio is still 16 to one. So part of, part of that number one is from that. Um, the other piece of that is that we have lots of social opportunities for you. So we have 43 intramural sports, 17 D1 sports, 20 club sports, if athletics is where you wanna be. Um, we have about 500 uh, student organizations and clubs, including those 20 club sports, and including a, a few Jewish student options as well. Um, so there's lots of different things for students to get involved in. We have some fraternities and sororities, we have ac uh, academic clubs, we have niche clubs, we have all kinds of service clubs, all kinds of stuff. Um, and I think probably the same as many of my colleagues on here today. Um, if we don't have something that you are looking for in the way of student organizations, you can definitely get it started, make it happen um, on your own. We are also number one for the best college for employment in Virginia. So for the last two or three years at this point. Um, so in 2019, 98% of our graduates were employed or in graduate school or whatever their next step was within six months of graduation. In 2018, that was about 96%. So it's been those two years uh, in a row. And I think we're still waiting on 2020 to feel to hear if we're still number one. We're hoping so, but you know. And that comes from having the opportunity to do the research and do the student teaching and all of that uh, before you graduate, right? Now, <clears throat> when it comes to, I'm gonna actually share my screen for this piece. Um, let me pull that up. There we go. So uh, I mentioned earlier that 25 is our average class, 16 to one is our student professor ratio. The reason that I pull this slide up is for the financial aid piece. So you can see down there at the bottom left in that little green box, um, what our 2020 and 2021 tuition and fees looked like. Because we are a public state institution, the in-state, out-of-state is different. Um, and I will be super upfront with you, about 10 to 15% of our out-of-state students receives merit scholarships. Typically, those will come through the academic departments that you are interested in. Now, when you apply to JMU, well, you are applying to JMU as a whole, right? So we admit you to the university. Um, but when you apply to JMU, if you put on your application that you're interested in business or you're interested in poli-sci or whatever it may be, right, that uh, academic department is going to be the one that's then going to look at your application and say, we will, you know, we want to give the student merit money. Um, if you come in undecided, that's totally fine. We also, undecided students also get merit scholarships, but it comes from different places on campus, right? Um, we do work with scholarships in that sense. We also work with FAFSA. Most of our scholarships require a FAFSA to be on file for you. So um, that's something that you will definitely wanna fill out. It's typically available in October, um, due in March. The earlier that you fill it out, the better off you will be no matter where you're looking because sometimes they ask for extra forms, extra signatures. And the earlier that you fill those things out, the earlier that you know colleges and, and financial aid offices can tell you that you're missing something and you can get them, them together. Filing a FAFSA does not lock you into loans by any stretch of the imagination. It just tells you what, what is available to you, what you are eligible for, um, and then you get to decide, you and your family get to decide how you want to use that money, that those opportunities to make things happen. Now, when it comes to application process, we have this year three applications you can choose from. We have coalition application. We have our own JMU application. This is the first year. We are super excited. We're going to be on Common App too. So there's all those options for you. Um, you pick, it doesn't matter which one you do. They're all pretty much the same. They're all going to ask you the same questions, right? You pick whichever one is going to be the easiest for your process. If you're applying to many other coalition schools or Common App schools, that's the one to choose. If you're applying to like two or three schools and they're not on coalition or Common App, you can use the JMU one and it's, it's good to go. We have two different deadlines. Uh, our early action non-binding is November 1st. So that is a non-binding deadline. That is just early. You hear back earlier from us. Our regular decision deadline is January 15th. Um, so that is just, again, non-binding, just regular decision like most other schools. Um, the only thing that I need as your counselor, the only thing that I require when it comes to your application is your transcript and your senior schedule. So if your senior schedule is not on your transcript, you'll have to get me that separately, but typically they're on the schedule or on the transcript. So we need transcript. You can send us letter of recommendation. We will only take one. 
So don't try to send us like four or five. We will only take one. So you pick the one letter of recommendation, the one person who knows you the best, if you want to send one in. We will accept personal statements. They're not required. Um, so, you know, if you fill out the coalition or common app, um, I think you have to attach the essays at the end if you would like us to get it because we can't, we can't access it because we don't need it. Um, and JMU application, same thing. You just have to attach it at the end. We are also test optional. We have been test optional for about five years. Um, we don't plan on changing that anytime soon. Um, you know, so if you, my rule of thumb, and Franklin and Marshall kind of mentioned this earlier, my rule of thumb is if you are super proud of your test scores, great, send them in. Uh, if you're super not proud of your test scores, great, don't send them in. It's up to you. Um, but those things are, are allowed. Now, what we look at when it comes to your application, because transcript is the only thing allowed, we're going to look at your core classes. We want to see mostly A's and B's in those classes, right? So, you know, you can take some, you get some C's, but we want to see some A's to balance those out. We also look for rigor. So we want to see APs, IBs, dual enrollments successfully, right? I don't want to see that you failed half of them. I want to see that you've taken rigorous classes in the subject you're really good at, and maybe regular honors in the subjects that you, you struggle with. You can see we have a 78% acceptance rate right there. Um, and then the other thing, I'm just gonna show you really fast before, cause I know I've got a minute. The other thing I'm gonna show you is the Halil Counselorship. This is one of our student organizations. This is the one that I'm gonna tell you if you have questions about Jewish student life on campus, you should email them. I'll put this email in the chat box. Um, we also have two Jewish student uh, fraternities or fraternity sorority combination. So with that, I will turn it back over to Owen to turn it over to Oberlin. Great. Thank you so much. Just a reminder that we should have time at the end of this presentation for Q&A, so certainly feel free to get those questions um, submitted now. But for now, I'm pleased to introduce Oberlin College. Hi, thank you so much, Owen. Um, my name is Josh Levy. I'm one of the Associate Directors of Admissions at Oberlin, and I'm going to let my uh, fellow student here uh, introduce himself also. Jesse? How's it going, everyone? My name is Justin Noyley. I'm a third year Jewish student here at Oberlin. So uh, Oberlin College is a small liberal arts college of about 2,900 students. We're located about 35 miles southwest of Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, and what we are a traditional small liberal arts college. What I wanna do for you is um, to help you understand a couple of ways that we feel Oberlin is distinctive from other small liberal arts colleges. And then I'm gonna turn it over to Jesse to talk for three or four minutes about Jewish student life on campus. Um, if there's time, I can talk about admissions financial aid, but I would rather have you email me so that we can focus more on this. So two points that I want to focus on. Um, Oberlin was founded in 1833, and within four years, we had enrolled both African-American students and female students. We were the first college in the United States to have a formal policy of admission, regardless of race or gender. So this commitment to diversity on campus, to acceptance, to tolerance, is really built into our DNA. Um, and we're very proud of the fact that we we, um, we were the first to, to admit students regardless of race or gender. This commitment to some of these ideas does carry out today on our campus. The other thing that makes us a bit different from a traditional small liberal arts college is this amazing combination of arts and academics. A lot of people know Oberlin for our conservatory of music. We do have that and about 20% of our students are fully enrolled in the conservatory, but that music really infuses the entire community. So does our art museum. Uh, creative, uh, creative writing department, theater, dance, cinema studies. So a lot of the students who choose to come to Oberlin want an amazing education in the natural science and math or social sciences or humanities, but they also love having the arts in their life in some way. And so our students really can um, have that be a part of their life in an amazing way. So now I'm gonna turn it to Jesse and let him talk about the Jewish uh, student life on campus. Jesse? Great, thanks so much, Josh. So uh, we have a thriving Jewish life here on campus. About 29 of our students are Jewish, 29 percent, excuse me, of our students are Jewish. Um, Chabad and Hillel have both been around for a few decades each, I think, or a little over a decade. Um, both uh, do Shabbos dinner services every week. Chabad actually does a, a Shabbos day luncheon every week as well. That's that's excellent. Um, and all holidays and various shirim also are offered throughout the school year. Um, J House is another excellent kind of Jewish amenity here on campus. It's the Jewish dorm uh, where I lived last uh, uh, last semester, the privilege of living there last semester. Um, a, a great space to, to kind of meet other Jewish students and also kind of participate in various parts of, of Jewish life. We had a weekly kind of Havdalah group um, that met on Motzeh Shabbos every week, which was really sweet. 
Um, I also want to touch on, if not the most exciting, at least the most recent development in uh, uh, the Jewish life on campus, which is that we just opened actually this past semester, um, our certified kosher dining hall here on campus. I was talking with Josh a couple of days ago and schmoozing about how uh, Oberlin is one of only a handful, I think, of, of, of Jewish liberal arts campuses, or, or sorry, of liberal arts campuses with a certified kosher kitchen, which is great for students, I think, who you know, want the kind of small campus liberal arts experience, but also want to keep kosher um, and engage with that that aspect of their of their Yiddishkeit. Um, yeah, I, I, there's a bunch of other things I can mention. I think, you know, um, I, 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 anecdotally, you know, I, I, I just moved to the apartment behind me and I had the Chabad rabbi over, Rabbi Shlomo, to, uh, to, to, to kosher the whole kitchen, which is great. Um, so the infrastructure is, exists on campus. Um, for really every kind of expression of, of Jewish life um, from the most kind of reformed to the most uh, uh, orthodox. And I think that kosher kitchen in particular will really um, help uh, with that kind of expression here on campus. Um, I think I just have a couple minutes left. I wanna really encourage you to use that Q&A feature um, to ask Josh and I any questions about Jewish life. But for now, I'll turn it over to Josh uh, to kind of wrap up our spiel here. Josh. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I would say again, Jesse, that that's a great job. You know, whether you are, you know, reformed Jew who just wants to do the high holidays, uh, whether you are more observant and want to do weekly Shabbat dinners, um, and now in a kosher dining facility, or whether you just want to pursue Jewish studies from an academic perspective, which is what I actually did at Oberlin. I, I that was one of my two majors. You can find all of this. You can be as observant as you want on our campus. You'll get great support from the Hillel or from Chabad, there are several other student organizations on campus that you can join and be a part of. Um, and you can really be as Jewish as you want to be on our campus. Um, and that really, you know, that, that's what we want. We want you to be to, to feel comfortable and to be comfortable with, with what you want to do. Um, I guess very quickly, um, since we do have a little time, Oberlin is a test optional institution for at least the next two years. Um, you know, I, you know, Information about our application process, uh, financial aid, things like that, is all available on our website. I don't, I don't know that it's necessary to take more time to talk about that now. Um, but if you have questions, I put our contact information in the chat there for all the attendees to see. Um, and with that, I think we're just gonna we're gonna cede our time and we're gonna let uh, Yeshiva University do their presentation. So thank you all so much, everybody. Great, thank you both so much. And our final presentation this afternoon comes to us from Yeshiva University. Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Hannah Grossman. Hold on one moment. Um, thank you all for having me. Uh, while I'm speaking, my colleague Oren Glickman is actually also um, on the chat and he will be able to answer questions about, excuse me, he'll be able to answer any questions about what I'm talking about while I'm speaking. So you can feel free to ask any questions as you have them. I just want to talk a little bit about uh, YU, not only uh, admissions counselor. I'm actually also an alumna and a current student in the graduate program. So I've been around for a while. And uh, there are a few things that make YU a really fantastic place. But one of the main things that people talk about is that we're big enough yet small enough. And I'll talk a little bit more about what that means as a student. But the first thing I'll just do is define exactly what that means. We have about 2200 students that are split between two undergraduate campuses, about 1,100 students per campus. Our Wolf campus is located in Washington Heights in Manhattan, um, which is where we have our undergraduate men, which includes uh, three undergraduate colleges, Yeshiva College, which is our men's liberal arts college, Sison School of Business, which is our uh, men's business, the men's division of our business school, and uh, CAT School, which provides associates programs in management and liberal arts. On our Barron campus in Midtown Manhattan, about a block and a half away from the Empire State Building, we have our undergraduate woman at Stern College for Women, which is an undergraduate school, the Women's Division of Sison School of Business, and again, the CAT School uh, associates programs in management and liberal arts. So like I said, we're big enough, it's small enough, and I wanna talk a little bit about what that means to us. Um, on one level, it means uh, that we have uh, small class sizes, that's on an academic level. So we have about a seven to one student faculty ratio. 
uh, which means an average class size about 20 to 25, but most classes are quite a bit smaller than that. Uh, so you're really able not just to uh, sit in a cl small class size in which you have the professor's attention, but really actually gain a connection with many of your professors who are uh, top tier in their fields, doing active research, and often even bringing their students along with them in their research. We have a wide variety of majors to choose from between our um, three undergraduate bachelor's degree programs, as well at which for which students who are in our associate's degree programs can matriculate into. And in each of these, we have really devoted faculty who are going to be the ones who are teaching you on campus. You're not gonna be in a large lecture hall with uh, several hundred students with uh, multiple TAs. You're going to be learning directly from amazing professors uh, with whom you're able to gain kind of close mentorship so that when you go on to graduate school, when you go on to your first job, you have people to you know, mentor you and write you those uh, really personal letters of recommendation. And it goes beyond the classroom as well, of course. We have uh, 15 NCAA sports teams. We have about 150 different clubs on campus. We have uh, so many different things going on each and every day. And you don't just get a chance to watch as things happen, to see uh, different things happening on campus, such as the new student newspaper or dramatic society. Uh, you get to really participate, join clubs, and even become a leader. We're, uh, you know, a small pool, and you have your chance to be a big fish and to really take ownership of your college experience. It's a really valuable thing to be able to do when you are a college student, uh, to be able to, you know, sniff around and find out things that you're passionate about. And that's something that we're really proud to be able to offer. We're also very proud of our uh, career income outcomes. I'm not sure if I have a separate slide on them later, um, but I can say that we have about, uh, so about 70% of our students do an internship. We're in the middle of New York City. We have so many different opportunities. We have uh, rates of acceptance to medical school, dental school, and law school that range between 90 and 100%. Um, that have ranged depending on the major and depending on the uh, destination graduate school over the last 10 years or so uh, for students who took advantage of our really amazing um, advising in that regard. And our recent surveys uh, by our Career Center, which provides so much assistance to our students in terms of getting internships, uh, doing interviews, getting jobs has uh, led to about 94% of our students within six months of graduation are employed in graduate school or both. And we're really proud of being able to make that happen for our students. Uh, one thing that of course makes us unique is that we are, uh, Yeshiva is in our name and it's also in uh, our mission and our academics. So we have Jewish learning on campus on both of our campuses. It runs a little bit differently on each campus. On our Wealth campus, there are four learning Jewish learning programs that students can choose from. On our Barron campus, the learning programs are customizable and are done more in class uh, formats, um, but either way, students are able to uh, choose the learning track that is best suited for them, find uh, growth opportunities, learning more about uh, different things you may be learning about in Jewish uh, schools right now, or things you may have never even encountered before. We're really proud to be able to make that happen, and students who are interested in mentorship from teachers are, of course, able to make that happen as well. But it's not just about the learning, the yeshiva aspect. We also are really proud of the Jewish life and values that we are able to promote on campus. So it means that students are able to enjoy all facets of the college experience without compromise. So if you are on one of our 15 NCAA sports teams, or if you are in a club, or if you are you know, taking any class and have a mid to more final, you never have to worry about Shabbos, you never have to worry about Yom Tov, even Chol Moed, you are always able to uh, take advantage of any part of the college experience, whether academic or extracurricular, without having to worry about compromise, because your values are really the same as our values in that regard. But it goes beyond just the standard college experience. It also goes into the specific Jewish life aspects on campus. We have uh, different things going on. We have Chagigas for um, Hanukkah and Purim. We have Yom Zikron Yom Asmaut Yom HaShoah programming. We have uh, Jewish Life student councils on both campuses that run fantastic programming. We have Shabbat on campus programs on both campuses with amazing people making sure that our students every week are able to enjoy a meaningful and, and, and really, really fun uh, Shabbat experience. So we're very, um, we're very happy to be able to provide that for our students. We really see that as part of our mission. Uh, so we also have our Estanya Abram Israel program, which means that we have about 
we have 40 plus students, excuse me, Israel schools uh, that are affiliated with us. And if you, if you attend one of those schools and you join our program, you're considered a Yeshiva University student studying abroad, which has a few great benefits. It means that you can receive uh, money through the FAFSA from the federal government um, towards your year in Israel because you're considered a Yeshiva University studying on a, a campus abroad. It means that you are able to get uh, Yeshiva University credits on our Yeshiva University transcript for your time in Israel. And it means that you're able to um, take advantage of our amazing staff on our Bait Vagan campus in Jerusalem who are able to guide you in terms of signing up for classes, uh, lead fantastic activities, and really build a community before you even arrive on campus. And you may be eligible for up to a year's worth of Israel credit even if your Israel school is not part of the program and you can be in touch with me about that to find out more. In terms of cost of attendance, uh, we uh, have about 80% of our students, if not more, who are on some form of financial aid. And that, that's because we are really, really dedicated to making sure that any student who wants to come to YU to make it an option that is affordable. We are, that's a process we're currently in the middle of, for example, for this year's seniors, working back and forth with our uh, financial aid office to make it happen for students who really wanna take advantage of what YU has to offer. One thing that we have is a private school tuition form. If you have younger siblings who will be in Jewish day schools, you can take advantage of that form as a supplement to the FAFSA. The FAFSA does not include that information so that that's not taken into account when your um, family's finances are collated for the purposes of student finance. So uh, the private school tuition form gives us that information so that we can take it into account when um, giving you financial aid. And if you wanna find out more about that, uh, though, of course, uh, once you fill out the FAFSA next year, you'll we'll have more information to work with. You can be um, in touch with student aid at yu.edu or yu.edu slash OSF. Uh, applying to YU, so this is for general admission. Fortunately, Anyone we here? are running out of time. Oh, I'm, I'll be done in just one moment, I'm sorry. Great. Thank you. So we'll be, we are test optional this year with the exception of honors, our rolling application, our, we have rolling admissions with our application deadline is February 1st, but our first uh, decision is going out uh, December 15th. We have a holistic approach to admissions. We want to get to know you. We will have an interview with you so we can get to hear a little bit more about you as a person and not just your paperwork. We have separate criteria for honors, our honors program, which is a scholarship program uh, with separate dates, which you can ask us more about, as well as our associates program in our CAT school. And you can come and visit us. We'll be back on campus in August for in-person tours of both campuses. You can go to yu.edu slash visit for a virtual tour in the meantime. And my colleagues and I can't wait to meet you. Uh, so if, if you're interested in being in touch with either me or my colleague Oren, uh, I deal mostly with the Barron campus. My colleague Oren deals mostly with the Wilf campus. Uh, please be in touch. Our contact information will also be in the chat. Uh, thank you so much. And it's been a pleasure. Great. Thank you so much, Hannah. At this point, we'll bring all of our presenters back as we do have time for some quick Q&A. And thank you to everyone who's been submitting all these kind of specific questions. But I think a broader one that we also receive many times from prospective students is just wondering what a kind of event or tradition, something really kind of unique to your campus may be. Um, and we can go in the same order as our initial presentation. So Patrick, if you don't mind leading us off. Sure, and I'd, I'd welcome Marnie to, to jump in um, with, with any experiences that, that she knows or has had on campus. Um, I think the, the reunion weekend with the P-Raid, that experience of coming together with tens of thousands of, of alums um, is telling. I think that's, that's rare, at least very uncommon, um, that you have that kind of a alumni base and support network and then where people are traveling from all over the world, uh, just back to the middle of, of New Jersey here in Princeton, New Jersey, um, to celebrate each year's uh, graduating class, um, starting with uh, the, the oldest living alum and going through to the, the newest class. So it's a, it's a neat experience where um, everyone's able to, to celebrate the successes of, of those that came before them and, and those who are um, becoming a part of the, the alumni family. So I think that is the neat experience. Please. I wanted to just add very quickly about that because the university makes it very accommodating for the Jewish alumni. Um, we are able to provide um, Shabbat dinners and we're able to there give uh, housing with mechanical keys that don't have to that are Shabbat friendly. We do have an Arab, we do have a, um, an OUJLIC couple. So I think that everything that the, the university does in terms of tradition, they really are very accommodating and very supportive of the Jewish students and Jewish alums. 
So at FNM, you don't declare your major until the end of your sophomore year. So we have a big uh, major declaration dinner that our students really kind of take advantage of. It's that big milestone. It's a great time for celebrations. I think that's the that's probably the one of the hallmark programs FNM offers as undergraduate students. Uh, I would say for for um, Queens College, I mentioned it a little bit before. Uh, the midnight breakfast, I would say, is kind of um, a, a unique tradition. So you know, finals week is very stressful for many of our students. Um, just for all many students, just in general, not just Queens College. Um, so we have a little. Um, time during finals week to help students de-stress and uh, again it's called midnight breakfast so uh, it's from nine o'clock to midnight because you know a lot of students are studying um, and cramming during uh, nighttime um, and during that time uh, not only are there you know volunteers and staff members who are serving the students um, food uh, of course there are other things like you know music and dancing and little activities and socializing but um, the president and the provost themselves also um, serve the students food as well. Cool. So I'm going to talk about two very fast. So my favorite tradition, because I'm a foodie, my favorite tradition on campus is every single Friday, the dining hall has what's called Buffalo mash, which I think I've seen before at like KFC, but we have it better. Um, so it is like chicken tenders, chicken strips, uh, mashed potatoes, um, vinegared uh, vegetables, and then like ranch and hot sauce. So that happens every Friday, which is for me amazing. Um, so that's just my personal, but I think the biggest tradition that students really like and that the community really likes is we are a big spirit school. So whenever there is a football game, right, there's a huge tailgate going on over by the, the stadium. Um, in the stands, they throw purple and gold streamers every time that JMU scores a touchdown. Um, you know, they have chants that they do and students have a, a blast and a half. I always tell when I'm doing like talks like this, I always say that uh, you'll go to at least one football game just to like say you've done it. And then if you don't ever want to go to one again, because it's not your, not your scene. Cool. But you know, it's one of those things that like every Jamie student will do at least one time. Uh, at Oberlin, one of the, one of the, I think the funnest traditions is probably art rental. So we have this amazing art museum and about between four and 500 of the pieces are actually made available for students to rent uh, every semester. Each piece will cost you $5, you can rent up to two. Um, but could you imagine putting something by Lichtenstein or Matisse or Picasso on your wall? Um, they are not the like the multi, multi million dollar pieces, um, but they are original pieces of art by these very famous artists um, that, you can, that you can hang on your wall. No, they're not all that by that famous, um, but there's plenty of great stuff um, that you can do. And it's just a really neat way to have that art be in your room. Um, your roommate can do it also and just have it be viewed and appreciated um, because otherwise it, it just wouldn't, it would just be sort of sitting in storage for that semester. Um, this one is more my personal favorite. I uh, always love the farm sale, which is where uh, our students, uh, largely led by students who are in our business school, but really students uh, all over the university. I did it myself when I was a student. Uh, work to create one of the probably the largest uh, Jewish bookstore um, in North America, which is a community hub, not just for students um, at our university, but for Jews who live all over the tri state area in New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, going to Pennsylvania, all over the place, people driving in to uh, take advantage and buy books as well as uh, shipping books actually all over the world, which really signifies uh, why use place not just as a fantastic university for students, a way for students to socialize, a way for students to make a difference, a way for students to buy books and uh, make money. It's also a way in which YU is able to make um, itself a part of sort of the wider Jewish community and providing these kinds of you know, great prices and great selection of books for people to use in their uh, Jewish learning. Great. Thank you all for sharing those traditions with us as well as your initial presentations. And thank you to all of our viewers for joining us this afternoon. At the conclusion of this webinar, you'll be prompted with a brief four question survey and we would appreciate any feedback that you can provide. Also, just a reminder that this was one of many different sessions that has happened as part of this virtual college fair and recordings of all of them will be posted within about a week's time at the same website where you registered for this session. Thanks again for joining us and have a great afternoon.